So, uh, without with too much further ado, uh, we're going to have Kevin and Reshma talk about adding SoftNIC capability to DPDK. Thank you. So, hi everyone. My name is Kevin. Um, this is Reshma. We're both network software engineers from Intel Shadon in Ireland. And we'll be presenting on how to enrich your NICS capabilities with DPK SoftNIC today. So, I'll give a quick overview of what we'll go through. So I'll go through this, why you should use SoftNIC. Um, I'll give a quick overview of what SoftNIC is and how it works. And then Reshma will go into some more internal details of it, um, give you some use cases, and that's pretty much it for this slot. Um, so why should we use SoftNIC? Well, if we think of it in terms of what we have in TPDK, we notice that we have a lot of eDev APIs, we have a lot of NIC vendors, and there's lots of differences in the features that are supported by those NICs. So with that, we face inconsistencies in the development environment. Um, it's difficult for applications to accommodate for all of the NICs. Um, and it just makes it even harder to write the applications and maintain them. Um, so that's where SoftNIC comes to the rescue. Um, SoftNIC provides us with a software fallback for physical NICs by augmenting the features that are missing. Um, this is brilliant for the applications because now we have a sort of layer between the physical NIC and the application um, that makes all NICs look the same to the application so the, consist or the development environment is suddenly consistent to the application and doesn't care about what actual hardware is underneath. Um, some other benefits that come with it are usability, so it's easy to use advanced features in DBDK by using SoftNUG without redesigning your application. And some consumer applications um, also get some performance improvements, um, but that's completely dependent on what you're actually running. Um, so a quick overview of SoftNIC. Um, it's a DBDK Polmo driver. That means it's easy to use with any application. All you have to do is add the minus minus VDEV um, option in the CLI for your application, and that will spin up a virtual device, being your SoftNIC. And you pass a what we call firmware script, so it's just a configuration script um, as a parameter with that minus minus VDEV option. Um, inside the firmware script, you can enable and disable whatever features you want to have that are missing um, and that firmware script is a nice sort of abstraction and reduces the complexity of configuring the internals um, that DPDK runs on. Um, so just a general overview of how a packet would go through SoftNIC. Um, so if we look at what components we have first in the orange on the far left and far right we have physical NICs, um, then attached to those we have hardware queues. Um, the green in the middle is our application and the bigger blue boxes um, either side are our SoftNIC RX and TX. Um, between the hardware queues and the application we can have multiple pipelines to augment the features so you could have whatever features you want, you could have routing, flow classification, anything like that. Um, you can have any number of them either side, um, chain them together to make things as complex or easy as you like. Um, and each SoftNIC component has three main parts, being tables, actions, and ports. Um, so if we follow a packet's life through your hardware NICs, your SoftNIC, and the application, your packet will come in on the NIC, it'll get assigned to a hardware queue, and that har hardware queue is matched to a table. So that table will pull the packet from the hardware queue, then we have a bunch of rules inside that table, and those rules check the packet. If a packet matches that rule, an action is applied to the rule. That rule then decides where the packet's going to go next. So this can be either to another table or to an outbound port, which in this case is a software queue. So let's just take the easier option. It's going to go through to a software queue. Then it's ready for the application. So the application can pick the packet from the software queue, 
do whatever packet processing it has to do and then it puts it onto our TX software queue and it's ready for Softnik to take it back and do all the TX stuff that it likes to do. Um, so then the TX side is practically the opposite of the RX so the Softnik takes the packet off the software queue, goes to a table, checks for rules, matches a rule, applies the action, then that goes through multiple tables potentially, gets put back onto a hardware queue and then from the hardware queue out the port back onto the wire out to wherever you're sending it. Um, so I hope that made some sense. Um, I'll pass you over to Reshma now for some more deeper internals. Yeah. Uh, so far, uh, now we have learned that Softnik uh, provides a software for that, for the missing features of the hardware. So uh, let's see uh, how this can be achieved internally. So uh, for this, to, to achieve enormous uh, features, Softnik uh, needs uh, some configuration script. It supports a configuration script where applications can go and this configure or define the script such a way that what features they want to would like to have that are missing in the hardware. So the script on the right side of the slide is a default example script which, uh, which can be used uh, as a reference to configure a complex uh, scripts for the so internally what uh, the who creates this softening and who has to do the configuration, all these details or uh, something like this. So uh, the application threads or uh, the service codes has to do this job. So service codes are something uh, dedicated and codes uh, which will be doing uh, ser work, service related work items for the missing features of the hardware. These service codes are I mean, facilitated by the EAL in the DPDK. So other than the service codes, application threads also can do by themselves if they would like to create, do this configuration and creation of the software. So first, uh, these threads, what they have to do is they have to create a software device as a virtual device in DPDK. To the creation, they need to pass this from base script as an input. Then, then after creating a softnik device, they have to take care of uh, creating a number of receive queues of the softnik and transmit queues of the softnik. That defines the length of those queues. And then after the queue of creation, it, it will be the, the next step would be starting the softnik, the created softnik device. And the start is the step where the actual magic starts where it loads the firmware script that application had defined to do certain job. So at this stage, uh, I would like to go through the firmware script details. So it does take care of, uh, as a first step, it will create a, uh, it will detect the links that are available on the hub, on the board. And then it will, the next step would be creating a pipelines. And then followed by, creating the input and output ports that should be for the pipeline and then followed by associating those input and output ports to the pipeline and creating a set of tables that the pipeline should be handling. And then the created table should be again mapped to the pipelines. Then it will be once the firmware's uh, next, the next step would be like application threads, they can upload these tables with a certain set of rules. Rules will be actions that are going to be applied on the packets. To do that, they can call existing flow queues and security APIs that are available in the DPDK. Once that is done, th this thread has to take care of running a Softnik run API in order to run the pipelines actually, which will be doing uh, handling the packets, receive, transmit and operating are applying the rules that are configured in the pipeline tables. So next slide will be on uh, uh, use cases. Uh, let's start with the basic use cases which we can achieve with the softening. 
basic uh, use cases could be switching and routing, and some flow classification related use cases would be firewall, encapsulations like a GRE, um, yeah. and then uh, NAT related applications also can be achieved. And traffic management related like QoS, policing, and metering also can be done with this softening. And it does support, uh, uh, to, to achieve all this softening internally uses the optimized DPDK libraries like Liberty, Port, Table, and the TM and metering APIs. So uh, apart from uh, these ba uh, basic use cases, there can be uh, complex use cases like uh, BNG and BRAS. And we can, con we can implement uh, complex uh, pipelines, uplink and downlink pipelines of this BNG and BRAS. If you take uh, uh, the, the first picture, in the, let's say the physical link has a we have certain uh, color markings there. The orange will be uh, available features that are available in the physical link, and the gray would be uh, missing features that are not there in the uh, physical link, and and the green will be an application. So, with with softening, what you can do is whatever is missing, you can implement using softening, and you can load them on a particular post where you would like to run them and in, in the middle of them. So that's how you can achieve the missing features uh, with the softening. So uh, with this, I'd like to pass to Kevin to take further. Okay, so just to wrap it up, um, four main key, key takeaways. Um, software provides a software fallback for NICs, so whatever n your NIC can't do, software can fill in. Um, we can consume complex DBDK features without application redesigns, so you can just call that with Softnic. Um, you potentially get a performance improvement for consumer applications, um, which I don't think anyone will complain about. And the many use cases we have go from simple forwarding to as complex as you want to make it. Um, the, the complex, most complex ones we've had there are BRAS and BNG, um, but the possibilities are really endless. Um, we have some documentation here, um, it's just on dbdk.org, it's for Softnik, um, so if anyone wants to play around with it, go have a look at that, it should help. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'd like to say thank you, and if you want to get in touch with any one of us, um, feel free to do that if you have questions. Um, we probably don't have much time for questions, but if anyone has some, fire away. Yeah, with the tables, can, when, when, the, when the mix instantiated? Can you dynamically manipulate the table or inject, inject new tables? You can. So there's a Telnet client, and you can just call that up and just put in things. Okay. Yeah. Two questions, actually. How many CPU do you need per port, or how many ports can be supported per CPU? And also, for when you have a CPU which is managing several ports, several physical ports, can there be different kind of NIC uh, in terms of missing features? Okay, uh, we, we need uh, we can create the pi we can create a pi pipelines and one pipeline can be pa mapped to single CPU core or multiple also can be mapped. Now, specifically, um, do you say that uh, if I ask uh, for a missing? Uh, Offloading, like I don't know, Geneva or VXLAN offloading, uh, uh, you can implement it in software. If my NIC don't implement it, it like it's not Mellanox or something like that, my more general purpose, you, you do it in the. Yeah. <coughs> Correct, yeah. Uh, DPDK, flow, yeah. Mm -hmm. DPDK Flow API, uh, DPDK Flow API does uh, uh, does provide this kind of uh, uh, encapsulation. It does has a VXLAN encapsulation process. So Softnik uses them as of now, and it has a support for doing a VXLAN encapsulation on the package. And in, in you can indicate the cost in terms of the cycle of the CPU. Uh, it, it's possible to, to measure, because it's, if it's not offloaded in hardware, but it's doing software, even if optimized, you have a cost to pay for it, no? yeah. if you offload. But it's, do you have some benchmark that demonstrates how much uh, is different than having a real offload? Uh, no. Uh, so very quickly, I don't think we've benchmarked that. 
Um, but what you can do is you can make a pipeline that does that VXLAN offload, pin that to one core, and then just see what that core is doing specifically, and then you could have your numbers here. Um, happy to talk to you afterwards if you have questions, but we're out of time. Thanks, everyone.